Once again, I welcome us all to the 24th annual faculty lecture. Team Glaucoma Care in Nigeria, the journey so far. I humbly ask that we stand on our feet while the procession commences. I humbly ask every one of us to start on, stand on our feet while the procession commences for the faculty members and fellow of the National Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria. Thank you.
Thank you. We take the first stanza of the national anthem. Shall we settle down? First stanza of the national anthem. Amen. Can we have our seats? Thank you. Welcome to the 24th Faculty Annual Lecture Team Glaucoma here in Nigeria. The journey is so far. I'll take the introduction of the guest. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished faculty members, fellow senior colleagues, colleagues and honored guests. So I want to acknowledge on table one, I want to acknowledge the importance of family support in an individual's life towards the success and with great joy, I extend our warmest welcome to the esteemed speaker's family who have been an integral role in shaping the of today's program. I would appreciate if you could just stand up or with a wave of hand so we can welcome you. Ada Onokoya. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Mr. Adeoti Odusoya. Mr. Boyega Oshiemi. Mr. Olumide Onoko. Thank you very much. Mr. Adeyemi Fagba Mila. And Mr. Omololu Odusoya. Okay. Right, so on table two. Ladies and gentlemen, with immense pleasure and honor, I stand before you today to introduce the chairman of today's great occasion, Engineer Olumide Onokoya. Engineer Olumide Onokoya is a former chairman and the managing director of Mobi Hall in Nigeria, PLC. The first Nigerian to win the Mobi Hall Chairman's Award of Excellence in 1992. <laughs> President Merit Award for Excellence Lagos Business School and Alumni Association 2014. We welcome you, sir. Can we just put our hands together once again as we welcome the chairman for today's occasion? I introduce the special guest of honor, Mr. Tunde Mabawoku, the executive director of Weman Bank. Can we see you, sir? Thank you very much. He's the chief finance and the strategy officer. He played a key role in digital transformation team that brought the first digital bank in Africa, Alat. Please, can you join your hands together as we welcome Mr. Tude Mabawoku. I'm 
And I also welcome the college president, Professor Aki Oshibogun, the president of the National Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria, the presenter of 2014 Faculty Public Health Lecture, Economic Politics and Health. And also I welcome the faculty chairman for today's occasion, Dr. Aaron Ajibodede. Please, can you put your hands together as we welcome Ajibode, sorry, Dr. Aaron Ajibode. Please put your hands together as we welcome Dr. Ajibode. And I also have on the second table, Professor Oluyemi Fashino, the faculty secretary. Can we put our hands together to welcome him? And um, on table two, we have the doyen of ophthalmology, Mama Professor Majeko Duni. I welcome you, please. Let's put our hands together to welcome Mama Majeko Duni. So it's also a great pleasure to welcome Dr. Kule Azan, the chief CEO of I Foundation Hospital. You're welcome, sir. And on the second table, it's my great pleasure to introduce an exceptional individual, a teacher, a mentor, eloquent, professor of ophthalmology, ophthalmic surgeon, a glaucoma expert. Join me to welcome the guest speaker for today's annual faculty lecture, Professor Adiola Onokoya. On table three, I have Mrs. The Lagoon um, people there. I have Mrs. Fola Lawiye. Please, can you just stand up for recognition? Thank you for coming around to celebrate with us today. Dr. Dayo Omogbein. Thank you, sir. Dr. B.C. Oyeniro. All right. Dr. Hayobami Kuyoro. Thank you, madam. Dr. Tony Smith. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Uh, Mr. Ladi Smith. Okay. okay. So I would like to introduce Dr. Kule. I'd like to introduce Dr. Kunle Onokoya, who has been a pillar of strength and encouragement throughout our guest speaker's journey, our sincere appreciation for his unwavering support and guidance. Kindly join me to welcome Dr. Kunle Onokoya. Thank you, sir. Okay. okay. And Dr. Olumide Onokaya is the chairman of the occasion. Okay, so on table four, I have Dr. Dupe Elebute Odunsi, Dr. Jimmy Koka, Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Oba, Professor Orenuga, Professor Okubadejo, Professor Ajilochuku, and Professor Afalabi Leshit. Can we put our hands together as we welcome all our guests? And now I humbly call on the faculty um, secretary to please introduce the board officers. Thank you. Thank you very much. The chairman of the question, distinguished guests, permit me to stand on the existing protocols. My job here is to introduce the college and faculty officers. And the headship of the college is a college president who is on official assignment away from the state, but is ably represented by no less personality than the college registrar. Our college president is Dr. Akin Oshibogun, professor of public health. A round of applause for him. The college vice president 
is Dr. Peter Ibeigwe, Professor of ONG. And the college registrar, who also wears a cap as both the registrar and representing the college president, is Dr. Fatiu Arogmadale, Professor of Internal Medicine. You are welcome, sir. And the college treasurer is Dr. Oladende, Professor of Dental Surgery. Let me quickly move on to the faculty board members. We have a 16 board member, ably headed by the faculty board chairman, Dr. Ajibode. You are welcome, sir. <laughs> the third Senate member of the faculty is unavoidably absent, but we recognize her, Dr. Ademola Kukpola. Now present in our midst, can you just signify by uh, identify yourself, include in no particular order, the faculty lecturer for the day, Dr. Adiola Onokoya, is our ex-official member. You are welcome. <laughs> also in our midst is Dr. Olusun Yabolutife. You are welcome, sir. Also we have Dr. Tarela Sarimeye. You are welcome, sir. In our midst is Dr. Musa Karim. You are welcome, sir. And also in our midst is Dr. Omodele Jagum. You are welcome, ma'am. There are some of our members who are not physically present, but they would certainly join us virtually. I will just read the list of these members. Dr. Afyong Ibanga is Assistant Secretary General. Dr. Alice Ramil is a Treasurer. Dr. Fei Adepoju. Dr. Ada, uh, oh, I'm sorry, she's just coming in. Please, you yeah, recognize me. <laughs> Dr. Ada Ahaji, Dr. Amina Hazanwale, and Dr. Olushola Olawe, and finally, but not the least, Dr. Regina Morgan. And yours sincerely is the faculty secretary, Dr. Oluyemi Fashinon. Thank you very much. We also recognize the presence of some of the pharmaceutical companies in our midst. We have Alpha Pharmacy, Exilor, Viatris, Aventura, and also we have Wema Bank PLC here. We recognize you, you're welcome. Thank you. Next I'll be calling on the faculty chairman to give his remark. The faculty chairman is a man of exemplary leadership who has held different leadership positions. He, is, um, he was the past secretary to the faculty. He's presently the, um, he's presently, he was a past secretary to the um, faculty. He was a past C acting CMD of Olabasi Onobanjo University Teaching Hospital. A member of different professional bodies. He's an ophthalmologist and an outstanding one. Kindly welcome him to deliver his remarks. Can I have the projected address? Whilst the projection is going on, I would like to stand on the existing protocol. However, it would be very wrong of me not to mention some important personalities related to the college and to the faculty lecturer. I would like to recognize the college president, the college registrar, the treasurer in absentia, My, one of our mothers of ophthalmology and a former president of the college, Professor Maja Kodumi is here. <laughs> the first fellow of our faculty by examinations, Dr. BGK Ajayi is here. 
In actual fact, to the best of my knowledge, he's the only fellow of our faculty with two fellowships. He first of all had fellowship of the college in surgery before it was converted to fellowship in ophthalmology. <laughs> of course, my good friend and immediate past chairman of, of our faculty, who is today's faculty lecturer. Please scroll up. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to this memorable event. The faculty lecture is an annual event which provides an avenue for the faculty to communicate with the community on an aspect of our academic activities whilst providing training to the future specialist in ophthalmology. The Faculty of Ophthalmology is one of the current 16 faculties in the National Pregnant Medical College of Nigeria. In fact, our faculty is one of the foundation faculties when the college became separated by law from the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria. This happened on the 24th of September, 1979, when the then Federal Military Government of Nigeria promulgated the National Medical College Decree in 1979, now CAP 59 laws of the Federation 2004, which established the National Procedural Medical College of Nigeria as a body corporate with perpetual succession and a common seal. Our faculty lectures are given by senior trainers and examiners who have contributed immensely to the progress of the faculty, the college, and all the nation Nigeria. The lectures then take place in a conducive venue in or close to the lecturer's training institution. Previously, it used to hold in August, but now usually on the second Friday of July of the year. The lecture series started on August 15, 1997, with a lecture by Chief Dr. Enola Akishete. It was titled, Ophthalmology in Nigeria, Past, Present, and the Future. In conjunction with the lecture, the faculty launches the Darwin Fund, which has been sustaining the activities of the faculty in providing appropriate equipment in support of proper training and examinations in an objective manner and meeting international standards. We can do more with more financial support. I'm therefore soliciting for your bountiful support from all our friends, family, clients, and corporate organizations, particularly those related to eye care. Today's lecture is to be given by a giant in the faculty, Professor Adeleo Nokoya, who happens to be the immediate past chairman of the faculty and a world-renowned glaucoma specialist, her area of passion. So you are going to hear from the horse's mouth, glaucoma care in Nigeria, the journey so far. Please relax and enjoy an important message and donate general state to the cause of humanity through our faculty. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Next to give his remark, I'll be calling on the president of the National Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria, a distinguished and accomplished physician who is a public health expert and an epidemiologist of great repute. He was a also a former chief medical director of the Lagos University Children's Hospital, Luth, during whose tenure the institution witnessed tremendous growth and achievements. He is also the immediate past chairman, Lagos State Primary Healthcare Board, and a consultant to the World Health Organization. Please let's welcome Professor Aki Oshibogo as he gives his remark. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. My name is Arogundade, <laughs> and I've never been CMD of loot. <laughs> Neither am I WHO expert. <laughs> but Professor Akin Oshibogun is our college president, and I'm here to represent him. Let me, let me first recognize our distinguished personalities here. Um, First and foremost, I want to pay tribute to a distinguished fellow of the college, a past president of the college, Professor Agisola Majekodume. <laughs> the chairman of this occasion. I know there are so many Onokoyas that have been mentioned that if I, I will likely mix them up 
in trying to identify who and who. But I say, I recognize the chairman and I recognize the onokoyas that are in the gathering. You are especially welcome and we appreciate your support for this meeting. Uh, let me recognize the faculty chairman, the faculty secretary, and of course our guest lecturer for the day. And all our distinguished professors in the audience, uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. All other protocols then duly observed. It's indeed my pleasure to be here, first to represent the college president, and secondly to participate in my own right as the college registrar. The college president would have loved to be here with us, and actually I would say he's with us in spirit. He is the chairman of the Medical Education Committee of the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria. By virtue of his being the college president, and as we speak, they are having foreign medical graduate examination at the University College Hospital Ibadan. And you agree with me that the chairman cannot be away when they're having such an important assignment. He has sent his apologies for absence, and he sends his good wishes for a successful and stimulating faculty lecture. The college has grown exponentially since creation in 1979. And as been said by the chairman, now has about 16 faculties with approved, recognized curricular and training programs. The Faculty of Ophthalmology was one of those established when the decree was promulgated in 1979 and has expanded significantly since then. The faculty graduated at first fellows by examination in 1982, and the number has grown remarkably now. It is heartwarming to note that the faculty continues to improve on our exams, processes, faculty courses, lectures, for parts one and two examinations. We're talking about registration in the range of 87 candidates to 156 between 2010 and 2015. And now we're recording figures as low as 20 for primary examination. I guess this may be part of the JAPA syndrome that we're witnessing now. For part one examination, the registrations have been sustained, in actual fact, it has increased over the years. From figures of between 32 and 41, between 2010 and 2015, we're now recording figures above 50 for part one registration. This too for part two, it has improved. From figures less than 20, we're now recording figures as high as 30 to 35. The outcomes of our faculty examinations have improved. From a pass rate of just about 25 to 30%, we now record pass rates of above 50% in both parts one and two examinations. This is a testimony to your commitment to teaching and training. Our assessment methodologies have improved as the college now utilizes well-known internationally acceptable and reliable systems in line with global best practices in medical education. In spite of all these constraints, the faculty has produced a total of 547 fellows to date. <laughs> While we've produced this number, we cannot ascertain the number that are still in the country. Many may have drifted out of the country because of what we are currently witnessing. In search of greener pastures and some for other peculiar 
and very sometimes important reasons. It gladdens my heart to note that the faculty, through this faculty lecture, have been able to publicize training in ophthalmology, advocate for eye care, encourage contributions of the society to, society to ophthalmic training programs, audit our college training programs and outcomes in ophthalmology, as well as raise funds for the faculty programs. The faculty day has also been used to honor senior members of the faculty who have contributed to the advancement of the specialty and the faculty. The theme of this year's lecture, Glaucoma Care in Nigeria, the journey so far, is quite apt, as we recognize that glaucoma is one of the leading causes of blindness, and every attempt at improving its care and improving morbidity should be encouraged. I also observe that we have invited a seasoned scholar, a researcher, and an academician of repute, a past chairman of the faculty, Professor Adeola Onokoya, to discuss this very important topic. I have no doubt in my mind that she will do justice to the topic based on her pedigree and professional attainments. I urge you all to relax, enjoy the practical, educative, and scientifically rewarding lecture. The Faculty of Ophthalmology has been at the forefront of support for college programs. In this year alone, the faculty supported two awards, which will be commenced during the convocation ceremony in September. In addition to that, the foundation fellow in this faculty also supported training in technology and medicine, including artificial intelligence. And the support is to the tune of millions of naira for both fellows and um, trainees alike. And I think the program will come out very shortly. I want to encourage many other fellows to follow their good footsteps, support the faculty, and support the college in the wondrous task of uh, furthering postgraduate medical education in Nigeria. On the very good note, I want to wish you a most productive and stimulating faculty lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Um, I'll be inviting the chairman of the day to give his opening remark. The chairman is a man of timber and caliber, a chemical engineer with many feathers to his cap. He was a former chairman, managing director, Mobile Oil Nigerian PLC, during whose tenure there were successful transformations in Mobile Oil Nigeria in more areas than one. Although our chairman is retired from service, our chairman is not tired, as he is still actively involved in transformation projects um, in the oil and gas industry in Nigeria. We are very honored to have him chairman this event today. Please join me to welcome Engineer Ulumide Onokaya, our chairman of the day. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. Yeah, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's indeed a pleasure to be here. Let me stay out of trouble by just standing on what we call the greetings that have been established so far. Um, it's always a delight to be with the academic community, believe me. Um, the possession, the color, the organization, and of course, the content. Um, I belong to a profession that uh, if we were to have a possession, we would probably be in boiler suits and helmets and all that stuff. And certainly not as beautiful as what we've seen uh, today. Moreover, uh, many of us hired the gown at graduation, and so we, we didn't keep them like you did. Um, thank you for inviting me, and that is to the college. Uh, but when the notification came to be chairman today, um, it was more of an instruction. And it came from uh, somebody we call Prof. Mrs. Um, Ms. Prof. Mrs. Deola Onokoya, my brother's wife, 
But she has since moved beyond that uh, to become uh, our sister, a full member of the family in whom we are extremely proud. And that's why we are all here, uh, not just to support her, um, but I can assure you to also support your college. And uh, we will do that. So thank you. Um, as I said earlier, it's always a delight to be with the academic community. I've been there a couple of times. The first time was an interesting one. I was invited to the University of Lagos to speak to a conference of some people we call Entomological Society of Nigeria. Um, and I went to check what that meant. And it said, the people who love and study insects. And I asked the person who invited me, why should you, I'm an engineer, I'm a businessman, why should you want me to talk about insects? And I did say to her, we are very different. You love insects. As an engineer in 1986, I built a plant to kill them. <laughs> and in the process of killing them, make a lot of money for Mobile and its shareholders. And she said exactly why we want you to come and talk. That's the beauty of academics. Your minds are so open. You want to learn. And I did enjoy being part of that group. And I want to tell you, um, I'm, I'm enjoying being part of this group for a similar reason, but different. I am a beneficiary of the science of ophthalmology. Uh, again, thanks to our prof, Mrs. <laughs> I worked in a company that uh, took care of its employees. And when it was time to retire, we had a policy. And uh, we would sit with the doctor, and the doctor would say, hey, you are returning in about six months' time. It's the policy of ExxonMobil to restore you to the condition in which we hired you. I said, how can that be? I've uh, worked for 31 years. How are you going to restore me? And they did everything. Um, and after the tests, they discovered that my eyes were in trouble. Of course, I knew. I'd been wearing glasses for about 20 years after joining mobile, thanks to the computer glare and all of that. But thanks to Prof. Mrs. again, the science of ophthalmology, she sent me to a wonderful place um, called Moorfields in London in 2009. They did wonderful things to my eyes and I've not worn glasses since that day. So I do commend your profession, there is something you are obviously doing. I'm an example. If you were marketing people like uh, we are in mobile, you would put me up as a 70 plus year old man who has not worn glasses for 15 years. So thank you. Deola, we are extremely proud of you and we are so delighted to be here. But I have another similarity, but a bit different from what you do. I'm a businessman, and in my career, we spent a lot of money to develop people. And one of the things we always tried to identify early was talent. And when we identify talent, we put a lot of money to develop them. And the most critical thing we always wanted to develop was people who had vision. And that's where we are different from your college and your profession. For your profession, vision is the outcome of having eyes. Vision is the outcome of being sighted. If you lose your vision in your profession, they say you are blind. But for us in the corporate world, as we develop people for leadership, and as I see what is happening to Nigeria, I think one of our tragedies is that we have people who have eyes but cannot see. So how can 
ophthalmologists begin to help us with the signs of people having eyes but cannot see. And you ask me, how is that possible? I know it's possible. Because as I was being prepared for leadership, one of the things that became clear to me was that just as vision is the outcome of your process of having eyes, for us in the business world, certainly in mobile, vision is the beginning. That's where we start. After vision, when we are sure you are making use of your eyes, not just because you open them, but you can see. What can you see? The future, the business environment, the destination others don't see, where you want to take the business, where you ask, what will my business be 10 years from now? How can you help Nigeria to develop people like that? I'm not saying we don't have them. We have them a lot in business. I teach at the business school and we develop people with vision. After the vision, the mind, the coordination of both, you stop at the coordination of the eyes and the brain. We move into the mind. How do we have people who can see? And then we go on to the strategies and the alignment with people. And of course, the execution of what the vision is meant to achieve. I don't know how you are going to do it, but when you look at Nigeria today, we are in trouble because we have leaders who have been visionless with their two eyes. I don't think we've ever elected a blind man to be president of Nigeria, never. They've always had two eyes, right from 1960. But why are we like this? We are like this because unlike the private sector, we have not spent money to develop our leaders. I come from a company where we spent more money on people development than on machines. Even the office that we built, $33 million of it, over the years we've spent more than $33 million on developing people taking them all over the world so that they have eyes, they see good things, they see other countries, they see everything good. And when they come back to Nigeria, they try to do them. But why do we in government have people who have their eyes open when they go out and as soon as they arrive at the airport, they close them? So I don't know how you are going to help if it means setting up a department that will relate vision, not as an outcome, but as a beginning of the process, we will be very happy to support you. I will go all out to the corporate world to say, look, I met some people in a college. They train people to keep their eyes. They, trained, they helped me to keep my eyes. How are we going to help them so that those eyes not only see but they have vision. You can have vision when you are asleep. Most people do. For different reasons. Most of it religious. But the tools have been established by the private sector that we can predict almost accurately the outcome of a vision. In religious organizations, they still cannot. I think there is only one thing we are better than them. We can predict, we can measure the outcomes of visions, we can develop strategies and measure them, we can build alignment, and most importantly, we can execute to where the vision was meant to take us. So that's my challenge to you today. How can we do that? You are the academics, you are the brightest of the brightest of the brightest. They are contained in this room. And we will be happy to support you. I don't know how you want to do it, but Nigeria needs to do it. Nigeria needs to do it. Because as long as we can't relate 
being sighted, with being visionary, we will continue to be where we are. This room where we are today was built by some people who had the vision. I remember when this place was being built in the mid 80s, it was all steel. But some people had a vision that it can be like this. Several years ago, some people were in positions of leadership in government. They had no vision to invest in electricity, and they have failed us twice today. Just because they didn't see it, they had eyes. I can't imagine that Nepal ever employed a blind man. But whoever have been leading that organization, they have been blind with eyes. So, college, how can we help to develop people who have eyes and can see? We'll be happy to partner with you. It's a subject of research, and I wish you very well as you consider it. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, sir, for that thought-provoking speech. I'm sure we'll be happy to partner with you, too. Um, next, with so much pleasure, immense pleasure, I'd like to introduce our guest lecturer of the, for the day. Our guest lecturer who will be delivering the lecture titled Glaucoma Care in Nigeria, The Journey So Far. She is a world-renowned glaucomatologist who is a mother to many and a role model. She's a mentor, a teacher's teacher, a trainer's trainer, and an all-round phenomenal woman. She's no other than the beautiful, highly cerebral, classy, elegant academician and ophthalmologist, <laughs> Professor Adeola Onokoya. Please give her a round of applause. Thank you very much. So I'll be calling on, before she comes up to give us our lecture, I want to call on one of our very own and the world of Othamal. Thank, Thank you very much, MC. At the time, I thought maybe I'm the lecturer. <laughs> the chairman the president of the college, the chairman of our faculty. With your kind permission, I shall read the citation of today's lecturer. May I ask our lecturer for today to be upstanding? At least I get to stand you up this time, ma. <laughs> Apologies. Professor Adeola Olukorede Onokoya, was born on the 7th of January, many, many years ago. <laughs> she attended the prestigious College of Medicine, the University of Lagos, the University of First Choice, and the National's Pride, and graduated with the Medic Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery in 1984. She proceeded to the Lagos University Teaching Hospital, Idaraba, to do her ophthalmology residency and graduated with a fellowship of the, Medi of the fellowship of the Medical College in Ophthalmology and as well as the fellow of the West African College of Surgeon in the same year. <laughs> While in residency, she had a federal government travel scholarship to travel to Bristol Eye Hospital in the United Kingdom in the year 1992. Dr. Adeola Onokoya, a professor and honorary consultant of ophthalmologist, is a fellow of our two colleges. In the year 2010, for a quest for more knowledge, she proceeded to the London School of Tropical Hygiene and Medicine to do a diploma certificate in fundamentals epidemiology. No wonder she's so good at telling you about research. And just recently, in the year 2021, she backed the prestigious and famous newly award of a doctor of medicine of this great college. 
I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm still coming. She specializes in the management of all aspects of glaucoma diagnosis and treatment. She's also an expertise in diagnosis of neuro-ophthalmology disorders. She is committed to early detection and diagnosis of glaucoma in high-risk individuals and reducing the incidence of glaucoma-related blindness. Adeola, another time I get to call you with your first name. <laughs> is skilled in the use of all types of medical laser and surgical treatment of glaucoma. Her major research interests include the role of systemic blood pressure and genetics in the disease process of glaucoma. Currently, she's exploring the potential role of blood pressure control in the management of glaucoma, especially the normal tension type. And she's also working on a family bloodline on finding data that supports treatment and possible cures for many degenerative eye diseases. She is an examiner of the National Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria, as well as the West African College of Surgeon in the Faculty of Ophthalmology. Dr. Adeola Onokoya has worked at the College of Medicine University of Lagos, Lagos University Chichin Hospital, as a lecturer and consultant of ophthalmology since 1995, and still working, and rose to the post of the professor of ophthalmology. <laughs> she is a woman of many parts. Just to mention a few, she's a Senate member of the University of Lagos, the Senate representative on appointment and promotion, the same board that employed me as a lecturer, the Senate representative on administration and technical promotion board of the University of Lagos. At different times, she served as the faculty secretary of ophthalmology, National Postgraduate Medical College, secretary general of Ophthalmology Society of Nigeria, member International Council of Ophthalmology Advisory Leadership Group for Sub-Saharan Africa, and also a Middle East African Council of Ophthalmology representative at the International Council of Ophthalmology Global Assembly. <laughs> Dr. Onokoya is the immediate past head of Department of Ophthalmology of the Lagos University Chichen Hospital and College of Medicine University of Lagos, the immediate chair Faculty of Ophthalmology, National Postgraduate Medical College, the immediate past chair, Glaucoma Society of Nigeria, the founder of the Glaucoma Patient Care Initiative in Nigeria. <laughs> she is the Nigerian coordinator of the International Council of Ophthalmology Examinations and a member of the International Council of Ophthalmology Accreditation and Certification Committee. She has won many awards. Again, to mention a few. She had an excellence in ophthalmic vision award by Zova Novartis in the year 2014. She had a DinarNet grant award by the Queen Elizabeth Jubilee Trust in 2019. And recently, she also had a Central Research Committee grant from the University of Lagos. She is widely traveled. If you know and have a personal contact, just check her status now or our DP, you will know that she's widely traveled. She has over 90 publications in peer-reviewed journals and has supervised over 70 publications, <laughs> dissertations. She's a peer reviewer for many international journals. Now let's come to the spiritual side. She's an active church worker, a dickiness, fully involved in ushering department at the Redeemed Christian Church of God. And you can tell when she came in today, she has arranged the ushering already for this place. She's also a member of the welfare group attending to the needy in the church. She has served as the coordinator of married women in the church 2003 to date. She's the minister in charge of pregnant women. And I was wondering whether she's still an ophthalmologist. <laughs> Nursing mothers and those looking unto God for fruit of the womb. And the minister in charge of eight matters of congregants in the church. She was so busy in her elementary days that all she does is read, read, and read. That gave her the post of head girl in primary school, the post of head girl in secondary school. She's an active shopper. That means no window shopping, active shopping. <laughs> she watches movies and Christian networking. She is happily married and blessed with wonderful children. Ladies and gentlemen, 
I present to you my mentor, my academic model, my amiable teacher, professor of professors, Dr. Adeola Olukorede Onokoya, MBBS Lagos, FMC of FWACS, MD. Thank you very much. The chairman of today, my brother, the head of our family, Engineer Olumide Onokoya, the president of the college, ably represented, and he himself being here by the registrar of the college, uh, Prof. Dr. Arugudade. We forget about professorship in the college, so everybody is a doctor. Dr. Arugundade, the chairman of the faculty, uh, Dr. Ajibode, the faculty secretary, our past president, my teacher, my academic mother, my mentor, Dr. Ajeshola Majakodumi, the special guest of honor for today, Mr. Tunde Mabanwoku the executive director of Wema, Wema Bank, Nigerian PLC, our elders in ophthalmology, uh, the first uh, fellow of the faculty, Dr. BGK Ajayi, our own Dr. Kule Hazan, the chairman and CEO of um, I Foundation Group of Hospitals, the, my family, uh, from Lagoon Hospital, ably led by the CEO, Mrs. Fola Laoye, the CEO of Marcelina Ruth Hospital, Dr. Dukbe Elebute Odusi, uh, my in-laws, my family members who are all seated here, and the other family members who are online, if I don't recognize them, our two daughters, they're watching online, and the other family members. All my colleagues that are here, my church members, they are all here. My friends, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all my mentees, you are all part of my colleagues, and distinguished ladies and gentlemen. All glory and adoration to the Almighty God for his goodness and whose, by whose grace we are all here today. It's indeed a great privilege and honor for me to be here and to have been nominated as the lecturer for the 24th Annual Faculty of Ophthalmology Lecture. I am very grateful to the faculty board members for this singular honor. When I was informed by the faculty secretary that I am to deliver the lecture for this year, I remembered with nostalgia the journey, when the journey started in 1997, because I was the fac assistant faculty secretary then. Uh, then our own Dr. B.G.K. Ajayi was the faculty chairman at that time, and the first faculty lecturer was Chief E.O. Akinshete. He was the first faculty lecturer. And then my thoughts were that one day I would enjoy the same privilege to share my experience. And indeed, that day is here. Since, thank you very much. Since 1998, when we started, there had been 23 of such lectures. Until date, 
have been involved in the organization of 17 faculty lectures. Opportuned by the positions that are occupied in the faculty as the secretary and also as the chairman for a total period of 10 years. So it's been wonderful privilege. It's been a wonderful privilege being an active member of the faculty of ophthalmology and being in the forefront of promoting the progress and the improvement of postgraduate training in ophthalmology in Nigeria. I've always enjoyed the cooperation of our founding fathers, all our teachers, elders, senior colleagues, and indeed, I'm very grateful. I pay tribute to all past faculty chairmen and women, pioneers of our specialty, amongst whom is Professor Ajesholama Jekodumi, my teacher who is seated here, both at undergraduate and postgraduate level. She's also my mentor. She's my academic mother. And it's on her shoulder I stood to peep into the world of glaucoma care. And I'm here to testify of the journey so far. Chief Io Akinshete, the first faculty lecturer, elucidated on the need for ophthalmologists in Nigeria to upgrade to meet international standards of research, clinical practice, and specialist training. How have we fared 26 years later? Ophthalmic practice in Nigeria has evolved over the years into different subspecialty areas, ranging from pediatric ophthalmology, retina, anterior segment, cornea, oculoplastics, and glaucoma, as well as public health ophthalmology. And indeed, it's a great honor to follow in the footstep of our leaders who delivered the previous 23 lectures. Um, and uh, that is in the book that we have. You can see the list of the 23 lectures. And the reasons why had been mentioned by why we have faculty lecture. Part was mentioned by the registrar when he gave his speech. But it's also to honor senior members of the faculty who have contributed clearly to the advancement of specialty and subspecialization. That's why you are here. And also to raise funds for faculty programs through endowment funds to support ophthalmic residency uh, education and training and to procure educational and training materials, organize courses, and fund continuous professional development. So it's also a professional inaugural lecture in which most of the lecturers reflect on the past, review the present, and identify the future activities that will enhance training opportunities, clinical research, and education. Glaucoma has featured seven times in the past lectures, as shown in the table in the booklet that we have. And based on the recommendation of our foundation lecturer on the need for a reorientation to public health ophthalmology, which is now to have a patient-centered care, my lecture is titled, Glaucoma Care in Nigeria, The Journey So Far. So I invite you to go on that journey with me this morning. And I start out with slide, please. What is glaucoma? Glaucoma is a disease that affects the nerve. The nerve is the, you know, that nerve is what conveys what the eye sees and it sends it to the brain. I don't want to bother you with the technical definition of what glaucoma is, but you know that it's a disease that affects the nerve, which is a cable that takes the message, the visual signals in the eyes and transmits it to the brain. So it's the connection between what the eye sees and the brain, because the interpretation of what you see is in the brain. Now, the connection between them is the optic nerve, and it is that nerve that is damaged in the disease glaucoma. 
Now the, the, the process of seeing involves light, what you see, coming in contact with the anterior part of the eye, and then you have the processing of that image on the retina. And there we have what is called the retinal ganglion cells. These are technical terms. But know that that retinal ganglion cells is the powerhouse in the retina. And image processing, the final stage of image processing takes place in the retinal ganglion cells. And it's then conveyed by tiny, tiny cables, which all come together, about 1.2 million of those tiny cables, which are referred to as the nerve fibers. And they come together at a point known as the optic disc to form the optic nerve. And from there, it travels to the brain. Now, the, so, so let me now continue from there. So the um, so glaucoma is a lifelong disease, and it may result. Yes. So let's continue from here. Please leave me to control it. Okay. So, glaucoma is a type of disease. It damages the nerve, like I said, and it can result in vision loss and blindness. It's a lifelong disease that may result in significant visual impairment and a cascade of functional health status, quality of life, and economic consequence to patients. It's a, glaucoma as a disease is not well understood. It's fraught with a lot of controversies. The cause of glaucoma is not known. The cure is not yet found because you don't know the cause. And it progresses in spite of intervention. Whatever intervention, glaucoma still progresses. And it's the commonest cause of irreversible blindness in Nigeria and worldwide. It's a complex disease with loads of challenges for control across the world. It's a major cause of blindness and visual impairment in need of collaborative effort. And so it remains a devastating affliction of our time. Now, how does it come about? In the eye, we have a fluid. That fluid, the function is to nourish the structures inside the eye. And that fluid is secreted from a vessel, you know, from the blood. And as long as your heart is beating, that fluid is secreted. And it flows inside the eye. And what it does is to provide nourishment. It's to provide nourishment to the structures inside the eye. The rate of production of that fluid, the rate of secretion, is almost the same at par to the rate at which it drains out of the eye. And where it drains out, we have like sponge-like tissue. And that, uh, that sponge-like tissue is referred to as trabecular meshwork. That fluid, the rate of production, balances the rate of drainage out of the eye. So we reach an equilibrium. And when you measure the pressure in the eye, that is what we refer to as the intraocular pressure. And that pressure is what a lot of people 
know about and they talk about when they talk about glaucoma. That it is when the pressure in your eye is high, then you have glaucoma. However, today I'll let us know that it's not just the pressure alone. There are other factors that are involved. And so when the fluid is produced, it provides nourishment. And then when all the nourishment is used up, it drains out of the eye. However, in some individual, for unknown reasons, the rate of drainage of that fluid slows down. There is a lot of resistance to the passage of the fluid out of the eye. And when that happens, because the fluid is coming from the vessel, from the blood, as long as your heart is beating, that fluid is being produced. So it's not a feedback mechanism. So what then happens is you're going to have an accumulation of the fluid inside the eye. And what then happens is the pressure is then transmitted to the back of the eye on the retina where we have the powerhouse, those retinal ganglion cells. So what you then have is the pressure effect. It presses down on those cells or it even cuts off the blood flow to those cells. And what you have is the death or a damage to the retinal ganglion cells or the nerve cells. And once that happens, then it means that whatever is happening in the eye is then not transmitted to the brain. So that is uh, how I can explain how the damage occur. But what caused it, we still don't know. Why people who have glaucoma have it, we do not know. However, we know that as we are getting older, we all know that different parts of the body, you have changes. The similar changes also occur where you have that fluid draining out of the eye. So age is one of the factors. And I know that we all pray to live long now that we even have aging population. So it means that if age is part one of those reasons that leads to an increase in the resistance to outflow, then you, if you live long enough, the probability of you developing glaucoma is quite high. As we go along in the lecture, you will see other factors that are associated to the, with developing glaucoma. It's also important that I let you know that glaucoma is not a disease that is limited to the eye. It's actually a brain disease. And because that's those cables that take the message to the brain traverse different parts of the brain before it gets to the visual center at the back of the head. So whatever is along that line is also affected in the brain. And it's also been proven, as we see here, that um, these are experimental studies. For those who are doctors here, the lateral geniculate body is in the brain. It's been shown that you have compression of those fibers in the brain, of the cells in the brain, even in the visual cortex at the back of the head. When the intraocular pressure was elevated, you know, in animals and even in cadaveric eyes. So it shows that glaucoma is not just a disease in the eye, but it's also a brain disease. And that's why it's a neurodegenerative disease. And now we're talking about the connection of glaucoma to all the neurodegenerative diseases we have, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and um, the temporal lobe uh, degeneration. You know, these are all connected to glaucoma. Now, beyond the intraocular pressure, the other problem I mentioned is that if the blood flow to the nerve is not adequate, those nerve fibers will die off. This is in spite of normal drainage of that fluid out of the eye. So it means that it is quite possible if you go to a doctor and the pressure in the eye is checked, if your pressure falls within the normal range, that still does not exclude the fact that you have glaucoma. It may just be that the blood flow to that nerve is not adequate. And what are those conditions that can lead to reduction in blood flow to the nerve? It may be because you have severe systemic hypertension, 
what we also call high blood pressure. Or people who even have the other extreme of it, low blood pressure, hypotension. You know, because you need the pressure head for the blood flow for those tiny, tiny uh, vessels to perfuse the nerve fiber. So if your blood pressure is very high or uncontrolled, or if you have very low blood pressure, or people who suffer from what we call primary vascular disorder, or people who have other vasospastic disorders, whatever it is that slows blood flow, it can also affect the health of the nerves. Also, people who have high blood pressure, who take their medication at the wrong time, particularly those that belong to the group of deepers. We have amongst people who have high blood pressure, those who are nocturnal deepers. About 24 to 37% of hypertensive patients are nocturnal deepers. Whether they take their medication or not, at night the blood pressure goes down. Sometimes it may go down below like 15 millimeters. Now there are people who are extreme deepers their own blood pressure falls very low. Now you can imagine if such an individual decides to take the blood pressure medication at night, what do you have? No perfusion at all. And it may even be injurious to the heart, to the brain, and to the kidney because the structure of the vessel we have in the eyes, they are similar to the structure of the vessel that you have in the brain, in the heart, in the kidney. And that is the connection that the eye has to those other structures. So whatever is happening in the eye will be happening in the heart, it will happen in the brain, and it also happens in the kidney. So it's important that we know that if the blood flow is inadequate, such an individual may have glaucoma without the elevation of the intra pressure. What about genetics? Well, by virtue of who gave birth to you, your DNA, or changes that had taken, in your, taken place in your genes, then you may develop glaucoma, which is why some people have very high intraocular pressure, the eye pressure in them. The normal range is 10 to 21 millimeters of mercury. But when they check their eye pressure, it's 25, and they don't develop glaucoma. You know, these are people we call ocular hypertensive. So it shows the individuality. It depends on your genetic makeup. So genetics plays an important role. And in fact, genetics is now at the basis of a lot of disorders. And that is where, you know, medicine is going now because genetic basis, if you don't get to the bottom of it, you might not know the reason why this person has it and the other person do not have it. Now, traffic support failure. That is a function of the tissue geometry, the makeup of your eye. This is what God has done for you. What is the makeup of your eye? Is it your eye very small? Is it very big? What type of tissue is it? The vulnerability of your eye depends on the tissue geometry. People who, have, who are short-sighted, for instance, some of them, they have very big eyeballs. And with the big eyeballs, that place where the nerve exits the eye is also quite wide in them. And that affects the arrangement of the nerve fiber such that if there is a slight elevation, even if the pressure is not high in them, you can easily have a kinking of those nerve fibers or you can even have an effect on the blood vessels. So the tissue geometry or the trophic support failure, you know, is about the tissue geometry. It also uh, predisposes one or it can... When the intraocular pressure in the eye goes up, the, what it does is it stimulates the, or it activates certain cells in the eye. And those cells, what they do is to begin to secrete inflammatory substances which will damage the nerve. You know, it just kills off the nerve. And the moment you have damage, 
And that process starts. It never really stops. And that is the problem with nerve disease. And that is why people who have dementia, it progresses because it's a neuronal disease. And it's the characteristics of neuronal diseases that once it starts and you have liberation of toxic substances, it never stops. So that is the toxic, uh, the excitotoxic theory. It just keeps on going and what you have is a programmed cell death. So they continue, they continue. And that's why also, when I said it earlier on that it progresses in spite of intervention, once you have that process ongoing, you are not able to mop up all the toxic substances. So it's a vicious cycle. And so glaucoma um, results into, and that's how it results into irreversible blindness. But you'll agree with me that the intraocular pressure still plays a major role in the development and progression of glaucoma and is considered as the most significant risk. In fact, when we treat patients, it's only the intraocular pressure that we are able to treat. That's the only thing we can lay our hands on now. However, we know that there are so many other factors. For instance, the genetic factors. Though a lot of work is still ongoing to know which particular gene that are mutated and how you can substitute for it such that eventually we may have answers to the questions we have with regards to causality in glaucoma. But for now, the only thing we can control in the eye is the pressure. And we then tell patients, if you have high blood pressure, manage your blood pressure well. Use your medication at the right time. If you have diabetes, make sure it's properly controlled. And, you know, so many other things that we would learn as we go on. Now, so what is the types of glaucoma we have? You hear us today talking about open-angle glaucoma, closed-angle glaucoma. Well, we have also primary glaucomas. When we talk about primary glaucomas, these are a type of glaucomas that nothing has happened to that eye. You know, you just have glaucoma ab initio, and that constitutes 70% of all glaucomas. And that also includes the type of glaucomas we have in children. Some children are born with glaucoma. You can imagine a child that is born with glaucoma. Such a child, you know, you see their eyeballs in a group of glaucomas, in which usually is very aggressive in the children that you have. This is from about the age of two to about the age of 30, 35. You know, you see a lot of 20-year-old who are blind from glaucoma. These ones have juvenile open-angle glaucoma, you know, because they have very high intraocular pressure. And then, of course, the open angle and the closed angle. Open angle simply means there is no impedance to the flow of the fluid, no physical obstruction. And then we have the closed angle type, which usually happens in people with a very uh, small eyeball, you know, because of the spaces in between. Now, a patient who has glaucoma, how do they present? It's asymptomatic because it doesn't cause pain, it doesn't cause redness in the eye, and it doesn't affect your straight ahead vision. So the visual acuity is not affected, and it affects both eyes. It is naturally a progressive disease. What it affects is the peripheral vision, which is why a lot of patients do not know that they have glaucoma. Now, uh, because it affects the peripheral vision, many people do not know. You see this, um, because I don't have, it's not following, so. Uh, it's not in sync with what I'm saying. Next slide, please. Now, so that's the typical presentation. Patients who have glaucoma, they can still see what is right in front of them very well. You can see that street scene of normal vision. Those who have early glaucoma, they have a bit of constriction and then advanced glaucoma and very extreme glaucoma. You know, all they can see is what is right in front of them. Sometimes what we describe as tunnel vision. Next slide. Now, how do we diagnose glaucoma? You know, with all this, a lot of instruments, a lot of equipment, we need to check your pressure, to check the corneal thickness, to check your fields, to see how much you see into space, and then to do the OCT, and of course, to examine the back of the eye. And when we do that, the result we get is what is on the next slide. We look inside the eye to look at the disc, and then the visual field. So, how do we treat glaucoma? Well, I have said it's just to control the pressure. But the goal is to preserve vision. 
until, uh, which is the ultimate therapeutic goal, and you give due consideration to the quality of life of the patient. But it's important I mention again that there's no cure for glaucoma. How also, it's been noticed that 20, there's a probability of blindness, of loss of vision in one eye, 27%, after 20 years, even with treatment, and for 13% probability of loss of vision in both eyes after 20 years of treatment in glaucoma. So you see that factors beyond intraocular pressure are implicated and it progresses in spite of intraocular pressure lowering. So the aim is to block what causes the problem. And how do we treat it? We can give you eye drops, we can do laser. What the laser does is to create tiny holes which increases the flow out of the eye. Or we can actually do surgery, surgical intervention to create an extra hole in the eye such that the fluid can exit without necessarily causing high pressure. So how big is this burden? How many people have glaucoma? Well, worldwide, currently, we have 76 million, or you can say 80 million people worldwide suffer from glaucoma. And it's been projected by 2040, 118 million people will suffer from glaucoma. It's just increasing gradually. Of course, the reason is very simple. We have aging population. Many people are growing old to 80s to 90s, and they are coming up with glaucoma. And if you take the prevalence amongst people of 40 to 80 years, because we say life begins at 40, now the prevalence worldwide is 3.54. And 60% of people who have glaucoma are in Asia. The reason is very simple, because they have the numbers. Now, but when you talk about the prevalence with regards to where it is bad, it's in Africa. You know, Africa, the number of people who has glaucoma is currently 10.3 uh, million. And this will rise to 19 million by 2040. So it's going to double by 2040. And similarly in Asia, and the odds of having glaucoma is higher if you are an African than if you are a Caucasian or you are an Asian. And men are more likely to have glaucoma than women. And also people living in urban center. We all live in urban centers. We have a 58% likely probability to have glaucoma. Is it because of pollution, because of stress, or because People in urban centers have hypertension and diabetes. Now, if we look at the graph for the prevalence, we notice that it's higher in Africans and it also rises with age, which is obvious from my explanation. It's higher in people uh, that are much older. And in sub-Saharan Africa, we have Africa is disproportionately affected by glaucoma and is the commonest cause of irreversible blindness. In fact, 15 to 30% of blindness in Africa is due to glaucoma. And for some population-based studies that had been done in sub-Saharan Africa, West Africa stood out with very high prevalence. We said the world prevalence is 3.54. In Nigeria, it is 5.02. And in some community studies in Nigeria, it's 6.9. And then in Ghana, we have 6.2. So you can see glaucoma prevalence is highest in West Africa. The reason, well, we do not know. Some people say that, uh, um, that uh, sorry, I forgot the word, <laughs> that um, some, it started from Africa. Uh, and in comparison with other African-derived population, because you know that during slave trade, people were moved from West Africa right through to the Caribbean and to America. And if you check their prevalence along that line, you notice that the prevalence increases. And the explanation is, is because of the genetic drift theory that you now have an increase in the prevalence. Because if you go to Barbados or St. Lucia, they have very high prevalence of glaucoma, 7.1, 8.8. But what is, uh, what is uh, similar to West Africa is the, is the fact that they are all blacks. So you have higher prevalence in blacks, and it runs an aggressive course. And the risk of dying is four times higher in blind Africans than in other blind individuals. 
And there is also that issue of increased prevalence with age. And glaucoma blindness in Africa is times two of what obtains in the world. And studies have shown that the prevalence of blindness is highest in areas of low socioeconomic index, low socioeconomic group, and also in people with low income and people who don't have access to care. Also, if we now go and do the prevalence of blindness in Africa, sub-Saharan Africa, is quite high in Nigeria. If you have 100 people who have glaucoma, 20 of them are blind in both eyes in Nigeria. It is that high, very high prevalence of blindness. And the national survey that was done in Nigeria quite a while ago gave us that prevalence of 5.02. And in Nigeria, it showed that it is highest in the southeast of Nigeria with 6.1. And is the commonest cause of functional low vision. And the number, if we do absolute number, it means if you have 1 million people that are above 40, 50,000 of them will have glaucoma. And of these 50,000, 20% of them will be blind in both eyes, just for us to understand how it is. And 56% of these people who have glaucoma in Nigeria, their pressures are within the normal range. Them will probably have gone to other eye care practitioners who have checked their pressures and told them that your pressure is normal. So it's beyond just your pressure. We need to look at the structure inside the eye. And awareness of glaucoma is very low at 5%. So what are the facts? The fact is the burden of glaucoma is going to be high, higher because of increasing life expectancy with growth rate of 2.6% in Nigeria. Currently, we are saying about 2, 2.5 million people are affected, but by 2050, it will go on to over 6 million. So who are those people that are at risk? How do you know whether you need to check your eyes? Africans, so all of us in this room, we are all Africans. So we are all at risk of this, uh, glaucoma, especially if you are dark-skinned. Older age, we all pray to grow old, so we are all at risk. Family history, that is very important. When I spoke about genetics, if you have a family member who is from glaucoma or who has glaucoma, you have a fourfold risk. Then if the pressure in the eye is high, as well as if that structure in the eye that we examine is high. There are other things we also examine in the eye. The central cornea thickness, if it's thin, or if you have hypertension, diabetes, hypotension, particularly low diastolic blood pressure. You know that lower one? If it's usually very low in you, the risk is higher. And then people who have diabetes mellitus. And also people who suffer from migraine. What happens in migraine in the head? The blood vessels shuts off, then it opens up. It shuts off, it opens up. And that also affects the nerves in the eye. And then people who use steroid, steroid tablets, steroid eye drops, steroid cream, you know, maybe for bleaching, for cosmetics, or steroid, whatever, you know, it leads to an elevation of the pressure. And of course, people who are short-sighted. You know, I, play, I explain the traffic support portfolio. And then there are certain risk factors that are anecdotal, you know, like overweight people, people who are obese, smokers, when you drink alcohol, and stress. Stress liberates a lot of catecholamines that will shut off your vessel and anxiety situation. So what are the risk factors for prevalence in Nigeria from that study? Advancing age, when your pressure is high, and if you belong to a Igbo ethnic group, you have a higher risk of developing glaucoma. Of course, being a man and illiterate, people with very big eyeballs, hypertension, and low, and of course, Yoruba ethnic group. So the implication of that is an Igbo man who is not lettered, and who is of low means is at a risk of developing glaucoma. And when we also look at people who are likely to go blind, the risk of blindness in Nigeria, Igbo ethnicity also comes tops and being a man and being deprived. So a poor Igbo man will go blind. That's what it means. No, it's not. Uh, that's what it means from the study. 
And if they also have hypertension, single. So the implication of that also, you know, Yoruba people as well. You have the Yoruba men, Igbo men. Once you are getting older, ensure you check your eyes every year if you have your family member or every two years. Otherwise, you stand the risk of going blind from glaucoma. So why do we have such big burden? Well, the greatest challenge is the fact that we are Africans. And that is, there is the issue of higher disease risk in blacks, which is times four, and it's quite aggressive. And it comes on at a much earlier age. And the higher risk in blacks is times 10. Now, Africans, you know, the inside of the eye where the nerve passes through, the way God made us Africans is bigger. And that is another risk in us. And also, the cornea is also thinner in blacks. So those are the risks that we have. And also, there's this inherent risk, disease risk in black race, which is irrespective of where you are. Blacks who are in America are also at a higher risk. In fact, the day I, I went to the U.S. You know, to join a colleague, the person has had four types of surgery in the best of hands and is still using eye drops. So it shows you that that inherent disease risk is there in blacks. And another reason is there's the poor knowledge of the disease. A lot of people don't know about glaucoma. And there's also the issue of late presentation because it doesn't affect the straight ahead vision. A lot of people, they tell you, I can see the person that is far, far away. I don't need anything. My eyes are fine. I can read the tiniest of print, but that is not what glaucoma affects at the early stage. By the time it gets to that stage, then you are already blind. There's also the issue of poor access. A lot of people do not have that opportunity to come to the tertiary centers or secondary centers where you can access care. So they go to, so at the primary level that they go, the care is not available. And it's also the issue of poor compliance with treatment. If you have glaucoma, averagely, our patients are on two eye drops. And the cost of those drops is prohibitive, 12,000, 15,000. How many people can afford 15,000 on eye drops every month? And it's every month, and the treatment is for life. So a lot of patients drop out. They stop their medication. And they do not want to do surgery. You know, there's the fear of blindness from surgery. So they run away, and by the time they come back to you, they have lost useful vision. There's also the issue of side effects to drugs. So the impact, you know, of glaucoma on our health, it's a public health problem, and it needs care. So what has been the journey in Nigeria? Well, the antecedents, glaucoma has been part of comprehensive ophthalmology in the early 60s. Our elders and the faculty took special interest. Uh, Oluri et al. in Ibadan observed early onset at 46.7 years, and is commonly POAG. Majeko Dumi reported almost a third of the clinic patients had glaucoma. Amoni in Kaduna corroborated the same pattern, and Ashaye emphasized the importance of early surgical center. But then, care was at tertiary centers, and diagnosis was mainly clinical, with visual field, that's the only thing we do. We didn't have OCT then, and the visual field is kinetic, not even the static one that we have now. And treatment was first-line treatment. You get Timolol, or you get pilocarpine, and you also are offered surgery, which is trabeculectomy. But because people run away from surgery uh, in this environment, so majority are on drops. However, with the establishment of the National Postgraduate Medical College in 1979, and our first uh, fellow, Dr. Ajayi, he started in that year. Then we began to have uh, ophthalmologists more, and then we had people in glaucoma. So the current status of glaucoma care, it shows that you have it at secondary level and tertiary level. It's completely absent at the primary care level. That is people who go to primary health centers or even private hospital, you know, to see their general practitioner. And the problem is also that of human resources. Uh, as mentioned by the college registrar, till date, 547 people had graduated from the college. But how many are active? Maybe about 350. And with the jackpot syndrome and all, we probably are now left with one ophthalmologist, maybe to 500,000 Nigerians or 600,000 Nigerians. And majority of these ophthalmologists are in urban centers, serving 50% of the population. And the optometrists that are co-laborers in this eye work, they are also 
uh, unevenly distributed, majorly at the urban centers. Ophthalmicnosis are in short supply, and glaucoma specialists, of course, 30% less. Now, these glaucoma specialists in Nigeria now, a lot of us, you know, went abroad to train, came back, of course, with continuous professional development. So we have a lot of training ongoing with glaucoma specialists. Now, the other issue is the equipment that is needed for glaucoma care. Of course, it's capital intensive. You need to get all those machines, which may be another reason why we have challenges with glaucoma care in Nigeria. These equipments are unevenly distributed. They are inadequate. The majority of these equipments are only available at private eye health institutions then have to pay through their nose to access this care. So the challenges we have with glaucoma care in Nigeria is that of lack of access, poor awareness, late presentation, and it's actually physician-centered. We do not really bother about what happens to the patient. And so what are the efforts so far? Well, in, 20, in the year 2010, uh, we all came together in Africa. We went to Ghana. And we had the first summit. And coming out of that meeting, we all agreed that we needed to develop collaborative and innovative efforts to reduce glaucoma burden. And in 2012, we went to Uganda again. Uh, and this was a program that was sponsored by International Agency for Prevention of Blindness. And there, the resolution at the end of the meeting was that there was need for us to integrate glaucoma at all levels of care. Start from primary care, you know, integrate it and have a vertical integration. And in 2019, we went again to Ethiopia. And what we went to do is to develop our own practice pattern, which is now called the toolkit for glaucoma management in Africa. It gives a guide on integrated glaucoma care and it's for all stakeholders. And we have the Nigerian adaptation of that now for the toolkit, such that everybody in glaucoma care, doctors, ophthalmologists, optometrists, the ophthalmic nurses can make use of it. And then, so what are the strategy for a model glaucoma care? From all I've said, collaboration, innovation, and integration of care. All that will end up, will end up with a patient-centered glaucoma care. And the principle to adopt is the WHO Universal Eye Health Global Action Plan, which is of universal access and equity of care. And we also would go with the SDG of leave no one behind. You cannot leave, you must give equity, there must be an equity-based care and equal to everybody. So the key elements are those of accessibility. And when you make it accessible, then it's affordable to all. And then you have equity of care. And comprehensive care, whereby you can actually you know, give subspecialty care to those people at primary care level without the ophthalmologist having to go to the primary care level. So everybody gets quality care. And then decentralizing the care from just the tertiary center or the secondary center, bringing it to the primary care level. That gives equality. So we then have this sort of model of glaucoma care, whereby at the base, what is happening on top is also happening at the base. You have a lot of activity at the primary care level. And we had a meeting yesterday, and I was glad when our first fellow, he's coming up with an app, and that app will do exactly what I'm going to talk about, and that is the integration of care even at the primary level. And what we do is you bring subspecialty care to the rural community. We can adopt telemedicine of care. Everybody in Nigeria has smartphone. So you just train community health workers who are not ophthalmologists. They go to the rural community. I know that such is happening in some institution. And they check, they take pictures of the eye. They check the pressure without intervening with the eye. We have automatic, auto-refractor, auto-everything. You just sit down. Nobody is putting anything in your eye. The pressure is checked. They take the picture of the fundus, and then they can do the visual field on an app. And then it is then sent to the center where it is read, and then interpretation is then given, and then you know whether you need to 
going to see the doctor or not. And apart from that, we can establish vision center. Now, this vision center is what is currently being used in the UK. Morfield's Eye Hospital has about five vision center in London. You know, they have it in different areas. And what they do is just to put the equipment there. Only technicians run. You just go in there, anybody goes in there. And it is then sent through a central data to the hospital. And doctors have a particular day they go in. All they are doing is just to review the results. And if you have any change, they do fundus photography, visual field, they do check the pressure and do OCT. If there is need, then you are invited to come into this hospital. So that way, you are remotely enhancing the activities in the community by the specialists. So the specialists are there to review, and then they offer the treatments. What about the innovative screening strategies I spoke about? Of course, you have to target the at-risk group. Anybody that is 40 years and above that comes to the hospital, you must examine the eye, do fundoscopy, ensure that that person does not have signs of glaucoma. What about family members, particularly first-degree relative? Anybody who has family member who has glaucoma must be screened for glaucoma, and they must get their eyes checked once every year. Now, if that family member went blind from glaucoma, the risk is much higher. So if they now have glaucoma, you have to treat them aggressively because the possibility of that individual going blind is also high. What about women? We need to take screening to marketplaces. Whenever we have our glaucoma week, we have colleagues going to marketplaces, we go to religious centers, you know, places where you have higher concentration of people. And then how we need to get across to illiterates and people who have int high intraocular pressure. And I've spoken about Igbo and Yoruba ethnic group. You need to look at them clearly. There must be a reason why glaucoma is higher in those two. And then family involvement is of utmost importance. You must um, explain, they must understand. Um, you must understand why, you know, they have glaucoma. The natural history of glaucoma, you know, must be explained. And of course, we also need counselors because you need counselors. Somebody is putting drops in the eyes. He doesn't see any reason why he's using the eye drops because it hasn't changed what he's seen. So the tendency of dropping off is very high. So you need to educate on glaucoma and you then offer the treatment. What intervention? Medical therapy, eye drops, people use eye drops, but it's not everybody that will benefit from that eye drops. And because 60 to 80% of our patients, they come at the very late stage. By the time they are almost blind, and when you offer surgery, they tend to reject the surgery. But it's important for us to know that if your pressure is high by one millimeter only, you know, you stand a risk of losing your vision in about 10, 15 years. And surgery is less expensive. I said 15 to 20,000 for drops. Surgery, you pay once. And if you are lucky, it works well. You know, you may not need to use the drops. And evidence has shown that surgery is actually far better. But why do we need to do surgery? It's been shown that if your pressure is at a certain level, your probability of going high is high. If your pressure is between 21 and 25, give 15 years, you'll be blind in both eyes. If it's between 25 to 30, only seven years, you are likely to go blind if you don't know. And then if the pressure is like above 30, within three, four, five years, that individual is blind in both sides. So the verdict is surgery it is. We have to adopt surgery as our primary therapy, you know, and prompt surgical intervention at that. So for to do surgery, we now need to address our providers, the doctors, the ophthalmologists, of course, we need that surgical skill to be able to do effective trabeculectomy. And of course, there are other surgery, MIGS or MIBS, that's the new name now. MIGS and MIBS, we got that from the WGA that just concluded in Rome. Uh, minimally invasive bleb surgery, you know, <laughs> MIGS and MIBS. And then, of course, we need to teach our residents to do very good trabeculectomy. What about lasers? Some people run from open eye surgery. Of course, we can do lasers. Lasers has been shown to work well. If we had done study at Luth, 
and it controlled the pressure for a year. And there is the well-acclaimed light study that was done in the UK now six years. 75% of the patients after laser treatment, for once, they've not had, there was no need for them to add the eye drop. And it's a procedure you do within five, 10 minutes and you are out. You know, so lasers also we can promote. The only problem is the expense. It's quite expensive. And then follow-up is important. You have to stay with your doctor. I know a glaucoma patient is with a doctor for life. Maybe that's why I'm in the, pro 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 uh, the specialty, because your patient will keep coming back to you for life. So you continue to have streams of patients. Thank you, my prof, for leading me to this subspecialty. And <laughs> so when they come for follow-up, of course, you have to check the pressure. We check the blood pressure. We check the pulse, because there are so many things that we look at. And of course, we also do the scan. And also, the human resources, of course, we need to, in a way, man those vision centers. So now currently our residents, during their training, they go to those primary care centers and they can oversee the activities of the community eye health workers and also train them. But we need to still do a lot of that. Now, apart from that, we also need to involve the community leaders, explain to them what is going on, and they can educate the members of the community. Also, there is the need for us to establish the care pathway. If you go to this hospital from here, this is what you do, this is what you do. And that is also in the offering with the glaucoma toolkit that we have just um, launched. And also, of course, strengthening the capacity. Of course, the Nigerian adaptation of this toolkit is available for us to use. And we cannot underscore the need for training and research. I spoke about the import of genetics. A lot of genetic researches are ongoing, and in fact, we're about starting one. We have, in fact, we, we are doing about two or three at loose now on genetics research, and you know, in conjunction with UCH, Eyes of Africa, a lot of genetic studies are ongoing so that we can know, we will know precisely where the problem lies because they have answers to some of the Caucasian, the Hispanics, but Africans, no answers yet. And of course, our medical students to be taught the art of fundoscopy. And then health education, health promotion, we need to teach people, as I'm teaching now, I'm sure some people, when they go from here, they go and get their eyes checked to be sure they don't have glaucoma. And then publication of information, educational leaflet, and promotional activities through all the glaucoma week, World Side Week, uh, they are all very important. And of course, screening programs into communities. And then we, I cannot but mention the activities of Glaucoma Society of Nigeria. Uh, Glaucoma Society of Nigeria is an incorporated body of glaucoma specialists, uh, which was established 15 years ago. And it's involved in CPD workshops, seminars, to improve glaucoma management. And it's aptly supported from the onset by pharmaceutical industries. I want to appreciate them today, Pfizer, Viatris, uh, Biogenerics, and I Foundation Hospital. For many years, we were, they were our landlord anytime we had activities. So thank you so very much, the CEO of I Foundation Hospital. And um, the Glaucoma Society of Nigeria, we work in collaboration with World Glaucoma Association. In fact, one of us is the governor for uh, on the board of World Glaucoma Association for Africa. So we are very visible there. And I had the privilege of serving as the second chairperson of, World, uh, of Glaucoma Society of Nigeria after uh, Professor Ashai. The current chairman is Dr. Fatima Kiari. What about patient-related solution? Our patients also have a role to play. Well, compliance, compliance, compliance. Accept whatever treatment your doctor has prescribed. Ensure you use your medication. Take your family members to be screened and attend your follow-up appointments. And general wellness is also very important in glaucoma management. Manage your hypertension very well. Manage your diabetes very well. And reduce your level of stress. Now, there is a group known as the Glaucoma Patient Care Initiative. That's another way to get to the community. And uh, we have Glaucoma Patient Care Initiative in Nigeria. Some of the members are here. These are glaucoma patients 
It's a group of glaucoma patients, and what they do is to create awareness in the community. They just go into the community, different communities they choose, and with the help of the ophthalmologist, optometrist, we do screening, you know, regularly, periodically, and patients that are seen are then sent to hospitals that is around them. So thank you very much, Glaucoma Patient Care Initiative patients. Alaja, thank you very much. And Damilola, my famous patient, thank you very much. And what about advocacy to pharmaceutical companies? Pharmaceutical companies have a role to play. 70% of our patients or 80% are on medication. Well, they should try and offer rebates and special coupons to our patients. And this will reduce the cost of the medication and to ensure availability of glaucoma medication at all times. And the other thing is for them to provide fixed dose combination. Instead of a patient using three bottles, drops from three bottles, put everything into one bottle. So they only have to use it once a day because a lot of patients forget all this regimen and that's why they are not compliant. And then consider manufacturing of anti-glaucoma medication locally. And you may also consider the issue of generics. Though I have a very, I'm quite sensitive when it comes to generics, you know, because studies have shown that, you know, you may have that one millimeter difference, two millimeter difference, and it matters. Because studies have also shown that over a period of 18 years, you can have deterioration of the field of about 10%. But, I mean, it's good to have something to use, which is cheaper. And then availability of newer medication. We have very good medication now that does a lot of changes in the trabecular meshwork. They are not available officially in Nigeria. Of course, through parallel markets, you have some of them. How do we sustain all these things I have said? Of course, uh, ensure widespread adoption of insurance. In Nigeria, NHIS covers only 90% of the formal sector. The informal sector where you have the larger population is not covered. It's left out, except they want to go to private insurance. So NHIS should try as much as possible to ensure adequate coverage of informal sector. And then hospitals through active cost, uh, cost recovery by robbing the rich, let the rich pay more and then use that for the poor and establish optical workshops or do a revolving fund. Of course, we cannot underscore the import of active community participation. Your community must go along with you. We're talking about patient-centered care. No more physician-centered. You're not the one in charge. And then public-private partnership. We need to go with the private people for funds, you know, the partner to partner with pharmaceutical industries. And then advocacy, advocacy to pub for public-private partnership whereby we can have surgical fees reduced by federal government or state government. They give rebates on drops, you know, for the pharmaceutical industry so that they can get the drugs cheaper to the patient. And of course, for government to um, adequately equip the hospitals that we have to offer glaucoma care. Now, after sustainability, that of evaluation, we need to evaluate what we're doing periodic evaluation of services, accountability is very important to the community and administering bodies as well as clinical governance and continuous evaluation of training process. So in conclusion, you'll agree with me that glaucoma impacts everyone indiscriminately. It does not matter who you are. And everybody in this room is at risk of developing glaucoma. Poor awareness, lack of access, late presentation, and poor knowledge remains the hallmark of glaucoma in Nigeria. However, glaucoma care has evolved over the years. Now the take home is, or are, one, what we have, we have, there's, there's need for equality and equity-based care. There is the need for inclusivity and diversity in the community. They must own their care. And there's collaboration for all stakeholders, optometrists, ophthalmic nurses, everybody must work together, as well as vertical integration at all levels of care. And for us to think of vision hubs, to have vision hubs all over Lagos. For instance, in Lagos, I calculated it. We need about four vision hubs, apart from all the hospitals that we have, to put in the community. And innovative screening strategies and technology. The app that we are waiting for, I'm sure at ASCAF, Dr. Ajayi is going to tell us more about it. And then funding support 
for infrastructures, equipment, and training uh, of staff is all required. And I want to say a big thank you to all these people who are uh, every one of you, but I'm singling these people out, the chairman of this lecture, my brother-in-law, thank you very much for agreeing to chair this program. Uh, special guest of honor, Mr. Mabawoku, he's still here, thank you so much. He's the ED of Wema Bank, president of National Postgraduate Medical College, the registrar, all our past presidents, ably represented by my boss, my mentor, the person who made it possible for me to be in glaucoma, Professor Ajishola Majakodumi, thank you very much. <laughs> Chairman of the faculty, my successor, faculty board members who are here, I thank you all. Faculty of Ophthalmology Fellows, I thank all of you, all those who are gowned and those who are not gowned. And elders of the faculty, uh, Dr. Hazan, Dr. Ajayi, thank you very much, sir. And Professor Onobolu, thank you, ma, for coming from all the way from Shagamu. My teachers, I don't know if Professor Oshitelu is here. My colleagues, all my colleagues, all my friends, my dean at College of Medicine, Professor Akishola, thank you. Guinness Eye Center staff, Guinness Eye Center staff, I hope you are here. My head of department, so that he won't give me a query on Monday. <laughs> Professor Ari Baba, thank you very much. Uh, Lagos State OSN members, I love this family of Lagos State OSN members. They have put this together. They have put this program together. Thank you, Lagos State OSN. And some members who are not Lagos State, they also contributed. Thank you very much. Thank you. And my spiritual family members from Redeemed Christian Church of God, I thank you all. My pastor, Pastor Dakwa Woshika, thank you very much. Men and women of the press, I thank you. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, if I didn't mention your group. And lastly, my family. I want to thank all of you. I thank you, my sisters, my brothers, and our children. Shade and Aramide, I thank you. I'm sure they are watching me. <laughs> thank you so very much. Now, this special group of people, they have been running up and down the day we said we are going to have the lecture, ably led by Dr. Adetunji Adeneko, the local organizing committee members. They are all my mentees, all of them. I taught all of them glaucoma, and I appreciate all of you for putting this program together, for putting this event together. When I came in here this morning, I was overwhelmed. But I want to thank God for all of you. Now, my submission is that the journey towards optimal glaucoma care in Nigeria continues to progress. It's not been the same. And we have made remarkable ad advances since inception. Truly, there is light at the end of tunnel vision. Now, I have not thanked my husband. Thank you very much, sir. When I was saying family, he has provided, he's my, he's my greatest critique. He's my greatest critique, you know, maybe because of the peculiarity, you know, we were classmates, we were being in the same class, writing the same exam, somebody trying to outdo one another, the other person. So he's my greatest critique. He's giving me the spiritual support, financial support, and the time, you know, even to do all this. Thank you so very much. And he's my pastor. So I close by saying that in Nigeria, we have made remarkable advances since inception. And truly, truly, there is a light at the end of the tunnel vision in Nigeria. I thank you all for listening. Can we keep putting those hands together for this deep, insightful lecture? Truly, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you so much, Professor Adiola Onokoya. We appreciate you, ma'am. Thank you very much.
we can take our seats. Thank you. Right. Okay, so I want to recognize the presence of the following people that entered while the lecture was going on. Professor O.O. Da Costa, Dean Faculty of Dental Sciences. Professor F.A. Leshi, former provost of the College of Medicine, University of Lagos. Professor F.B. Akinshola, Dean Faculty of Clinical Sciences. Mrs. Modukwe Elebute, CEO, Meseli Root Center. Dr. Jimmy Koka, Mrs. Adeoti Odusoya, and Mrs. Folakemi Oshi, Oshiyemi. We also recognize the um, staff of Wema Bank and also the media's present here, News Agency of Nigeria, Rave Television, Nigerian Television Authority, Television Continental. Thank you very much for your presence. And so I invite the host of today's occasion, the faculty chairman, Dr. Haran Ajibode, for the presentation of the award. So I invite you, ma'am, Professor Adiola Nokoya. Thank you. As it is our habit, we present to the faculty lecturer of the day as a token for remembrance of our appreciation. Because if we nominate and you refuse, there's nothing we can do. We nominated and she gladly accepted. So it is my pleasure to present this plaque to Dr. Adela Onokoya, FMC of MD, the 24th Annual Faculty Lecturer, and the topic is Glaucoma Care in Nigeria, the journey so far. Today, 14 July, 2023, congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to use this opportunity to recognize my employer. I don't want to get back to Shagamu um, tomorrow and then on the radio. <laughs> it is announced that uh, due to unforeseen circumstances, can you please go home? I have here the chairman of my hospital management board and my mentor, a great teacher. Uh, they've been mentioning his name since, since we started. Somehow, somehow, I forgot to mention. And uh, I want to redeem my image. Uh, I want to say I'm prostrating. And I'm talking about Dr. Kunle Azan. Is the chairman, board of management, Allah BC on Obanjo University Teaching Hospital. Since 2020 December that he was appointed to head our hospital, our hospital now have a one-stop center for ophthalmology. It is called Calf Eye Center. That is a game changer in our own hospital and it is for us to be able to do it properly he was in front to equip it to make it very functional and pushing us to make it very very more functional he has not stopped since day one so i want to use this opportunity to publicly thank him above that recently he made sure my name was included in those that was recognized for 
excellent service in that hospital. My small self was celebrated as one of those who helped that hospital. Thank you very much, sir. The next event now, yesterday, each year when we do our faculty lecture, we do not forget our residents. Yesterday we had a quiz competition for current residents nationally, all over the country. At the end of the quiz competition, of course, we give a token of recognition to the three winners, the second runners-up, the first runner-up, and the winner. So it is the time now to announce these winners. The second runner-up is Dr. Omolara O. Adenito. from Uni Oshun Teaching Hospital Oshogbo. It is my pleasure to present to you this small envelope. And this, and this is a small envelope, actually. <laughs> For the effort because we use it to encourage our residents. Congratulations. The first runner-up of Olabo Okbo Oshito Quiz Competition 2023 is Dr. Chukunonzo O. Urum of University College Hospital Ibadan. And the winner of Olabokpo Oshutokun Quiz Competition 2023, Dr. Ambali O. Ambali of University of Ilorin Teaching Hospital. Stand up. Stand up. Congratulations and thank you very much. Yeah. I'm still standing on the existing protocol. Permit me to introduce the representative of the Provost of the College of Medicine, University of Lagos, Professor Ulufisayo Aribaba. A round of applause for him. <laughs> so we go to the goodwill messages, and this will be taken by one, the special guest of honor. And that is in the person of Mr. Tunde Mabamoku, the ED for Wema Bank. You have about five minutes. Goodwill message. A round of applause for Mr. Tunde Mabawanko. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, just to be sure that we are all here. Um, my name is Tunde Mabawanku, a very interesting surname for those that understand Yoruba. Um, so when they were speaking about glaucoma, I said, no, this is not, my surname and glaucoma are not in the same <laughs> sentence. <laughs> um, but the interesting part, um, when she did, when Dr. Nokonya gave the profile, um, was some sort of worry. I'm an African. I'm a Yoruba man. I am getting old. I am a banker. And I live in Lagos. So by the time you add all of those, it's, <laughs> it's glaucoma squared. 
Um, but yes, it is a major source of worry. I remember I have had some personal experience with glaucoma. I think it was in 2012. Then I just woke up, went to office. I had some blood vision. So I went to the optician. I said, ah, you have um, pressure in the eye. And this, this, this is the reason. But first go and do blood pressure test and let us see. And expectedly, blood pressure escalated, a lot of issues, and I had to deal with it over the last 10 years. And like she mentioned, um, prevention, awareness. It's important to make sure that on a regular basis, once you check those boxes, and you see that you are susceptible to it, it's important that you check and test. We that we are bankers, um, I've been in banking for 23 years. It's a high pressure environment. Um, we encourage our colleagues on a regular basis. Routine health check. In fact, after a while, we made it mandatory. Every employee above 25 must do an annual checkup. It's important, if, and we must see the evidence. We don't want to see the result, but we need to see the evidence of that um, check. Because imagine you live in Moe, Bafo, and you're working in Marina. Even just going to office and signing register is enough stress for 10 years. Go back, go, go, go to office and come back. Um, but um, a goodwill message. Um, so thank you very much, doctor. Um, excellent, excellent um, presentation, speech, lecture. And for us as bankers, it's always, how can we help? Are there opportunities to collaborate? The primary role of bankers is always financial intermediation. Take from this side, give to this side. Take from those that have excess and give to those that require. But slowly, banking has also evolved. It was first a case of CSR. Just put the money in. Ah, you need something, we'll contribute. Let us build a center. Let us build this. But we are now changing and realizing that it has to be a lot about partnership. It has to be a lot about empowerment. And it has to be a lot around impact. Um, and one of the things we are also trying is that advocacy. So we bankers came together. There's some hospital in Lagos Island called Macy Street Hospital. It's been there, Macy, sorry, apologies. It's been there for years, decades. And we said as bankers, let's even do some small contribution and let us rebuild this entire hospital and put it back as a legacy in Lagos Island. Same for glaucoma, same for, I, I love the idea of the clinics that you mentioned, the vision hubs that you mentioned. Are there opportunities to partner? So we would like to sit down as an organization with you to see possible areas um, of collaboration. But on a final note, my appeal to the esteemed professors, doctors, and everybody here is the advocacy. It's important. Um, as ministers are being announced, as people are being put in those places, let us also make sure we have the right people in the right places. Because it's from the top um, governance decision making that will start impacting and making a difference. So on behalf of my organization, um, thank you very much, Dr. Nokoya. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And let's continue to pray for a better Nigeria. Thank you. I didn't want to, but you said I must talk about my bank and our products. <laughs> our main product is money. So please, <laughs> where you have money, I have resources, bring to us. Um, but outside of that, Wema Bank, for those that know, we have been around for 78 years. Um, through ups and downs, um, um, Naira redesign, Kauri Naira, Dollar Naira, we've been here for 78 years and we want to be here for another 78. We have a lot of products, um, but I guess what is important here is things around healthcare. So we actually have a healthcare function whose job is to partner and see how we can help from even nano loans or nano um, insurance for nursing mothers, for small children, to enable them to have the little, little amount that they need for antenatal and what have you. So our job as a bank or my bank, um, we are here to support. And further details we will share um, with each individual person. Again, thank you very much and have a lovely day. Thank you, sir. And to take the next goodwill message, I will take call on a doyen of ophthalmology, uh, Mama Professor Jadisola Majekudumi. Ajisola, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, apologies, ma. Professor Ajisola Majekudumi. Thank you, ma.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The day is um, moving fast, and I'm sure many of you, before your tummy starts rumbling, um, I want to follow the existing protocol. But before I do that, since um, the person who presented the lecture and the family, they are Christians from RCCG, I would like to sing a little song. And that is, if you know it, please join me. That is, I want to thank God for keeping me alive in my 80s to come and listen to this lecture. And this is, what shall I say unto the Lord? All I have to say is thank you, Lord. What shall I say unto the Lord? All I have to say is thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All I have to say is thank you, Lord. I'm thanking the Lord for making me to be here today to listen to one of my students at different levels. And I want to thank God also that all my mentees and products, they've done excellently well. So, for me to be here and to listen and to learn more about glaucoma, I need to thank God. But I will say one or two things about the lecturer. Apart from being from oldest school in Nigeria, Methodist Guys High School. She came to read medicine and I was her teacher. But when she specialized, I met her and Kunle at a party. They were boyfriend and girlfriend then. <laughs> and I said, Kunle, I know you are we have a common um, mentor, late Professor Elibuti. And he said he wanted to do um, orthopedics. So I turned to Diola, I said, what do you want to do? She said, orthopedics, I said, you are joking. <laughs> orthopedics to be hacking on people's bones? I said, no. And at that time, there were few ophthalmologists in Lagos. I think there were about three or four. I said, please, you are doing ophthalmology. So it was a war between me and Kule. Kule wanted her to do orthopedics, and I wanted her to do ophthalmology. But with God on my side, I won. <laughs> <laughs> then she came, and she was Beautiful, brilliant. And I was to go on sabbatical to the University of Liverpool in 2004. And I've started this glaucoma clinic. Who is going to look at it? Many of the others wanted to go into anterior segment. You cannot blame them because that's where the money is. So one day I said, call me Dr. Nokoya. And she came and I said, how are you? Fine. I said, I am going to um, Liverpool for one year. Who is going to run my glaucoma clinic? She looked down. I said, well, I'm telling you that you are going to take over with immediate effect. And she said, yes, ma. And this is the result. Thank you very much for making me so proud every time. I have listened to her in, at international conferences. 
and she has also made me proud. We were together in Hong Kong for a conference and after presenting the papers, one of the um, members of the committee said, where is that young lady from? I said, she's from Mio. <laughs> and I just dragged her and said, meet so so and so, that is the Ola for you. Well, the brother-in-law said when he was talking to us, said, if you have vision, you will choose the right people. Because a leader who lives without a visionary successor is a failed leader. So when he came, I said, you were probably reading into my mind because your sister-in-law was identified because she had all the potentials. And I will just say, please, nobody is too old to learn. But I will add on a lighter note. She said, age is one of the factors, you know, in glaucoma. Thank God I don't have glaucoma. <laughs> She said, among the Yorubas, thank God I'm a Yoruba, but I'm not married to Igbo. <laughs> Finally, she said, it is more in men than in women, particularly in Yoruba men. And I turned to Kule Azan and I said, oh yeah, Kori Bear. I, will say, I won't say this in English so that others will hear. I said, oh yeah, Corey Bear, he told him to do one report. <laughs> Once again, thank you all for coming. Thank you all for coming and Adola, thank you for putting smiles on my face again. God bless you. Thank you, Ma. <laughs> to take the next good message is the first fellow for the Faculty of Ophthalmology, Nigeria Postgraduate Medical College, um, Medical College, and the group manager, the group managing director, Eleta I Institute, Ibadan. Dr. BGK Ajayi. Good afternoon, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the faculty lecture, and all dignitaries present, and Kule especially for supporting her. Now, I took over as faculty chairman from Professor Maja Kudumi. She laid a wonderful foundation on which my team built. And one of the products was the decision to have the faculty lecture. And I think it's probably the most important singular achievement of the faculty and everybody worked together to ensure success. So I cannot claim it, but I claim it on behalf of the team. Thank you very much, my colleagues, for supporting us. In, 19, in 2022 or 23, 21, 19, sorry, yes, it, in 2003, 20, the International Council of Ophthalmology came to Nigeria to see what we were doing. They had heard a lot about the state of ophthalmology in Nigeria, and they were not happy. So they came to see what exactly was going on. And the list of the things we needed to do was endless. But we started by having a vision Vision for the future Nigeria. 
And that's what caused my attention to what uh, chief, is it Otoba? <laughs> Engineer Onokoya said. And really gave me a deep feeling. We started on the right path. The international community commended us as the first group of people, of ophthalmologists, to have a vision, a strategy for leading of, for putting, for improving health eye care in Nigeria. And my colleagues who took over up to now have done excellently well. But the much needed support has not been coming forth from industry, from businesses, because they don't actually understand why they need to support this vision. Everybody here today is able to get here because he has sight. Now just imagine if that sight were not there. You probably won't be here. So when you think about it, it is about supporting yourself. So you are supporting yourself to help by helping us. And artificial intelligence, technology, is going to play a prominent role in the future of eye care. And eye care is going to lead medical care. I'm not joking. It's going to lead medical care in the world. And we have the potential for doing something about it. And that was why we set up, we decided, my team in the Letter Eye Institute decided to set up an app. We, call, we have a center for eye health and innovation. And as far back as 2018, we started this center. We first make our, our first breakthrough is this Vision Health Detective app. People have thought it's about testing the eye for vision. No, it's more than that. It is a simple tool that you, in the comfort of your offices, can use and decide whether you need to see an ophthalmologist or not. Otumbash, Mabamoku, am I right? Are you okay? <laughs> you got it right by saying you shouldn't follow them all. <laughs> but he also mentioned something. He could have been in his office and checked himself and known that he needed eye care. I divide people in this hall into two groups. The poor rich and the poor poor. Or rather, the rich poor and the poor poor. What do I mean by that? The rich poor has money, can get to the eye clinic, can see the best of doctors, but he has no time. And it distresses me every time I see them. Almost blind. Governors, ministers, and senior people who have no reason to go blind. But they did not know when it was getting there. That was what Dr. Adeola Onokoya was trying to talk about. The poor poor, they have no money, therefore they have no access. They are not even aware of any problem until the thing hits them in the face. That app is meant for one of them. And I true me, engineer, he says it's not Otumba. <laughs> I threw a challenge. I sent him a note. We want to partnership with you. Not just, not for money, but to ensure that this app reaches every corner. It's free. But no matter how free something is, distribution is often a major problem. But if people like you and those here drive it, we shall win the first battle in the preservation of sight. The second battle is that we have just about 300 of 350 active ophthalmologists. How are we going to cope? 
to again, innovation comes into being. And we're going to put out the second app. Very shortly, we are working on it. And that will make even more people, all the family physicians, practitioners of ophthalmology, so that they will recognize the people through the app and send to those who can, who can use them to make them better. I won't want to take your time. Thank you very much for this nice gathering. Thank you, sir. And to give the last goodwill message is the founder and the chief medical director of High Foundation Hospital, Dr. Adekunle Azan. Thank you. I stand on existing protocol. Um, since uh, Dr. Nokoya is in love with the Igbos, <laughs> I'll tell you there's an Igbo proverb that Chino Achebe, that Okonko said, for those whom their palm kernel are cracked for them by benevolent spirit, should learn to be humble. Dr. Anoga is she's very humble. And that is why she has everything around her, the family, the mentors, admirers, and she was able to unnest all those goodwill and potentials to be what she is today. And that was it takes to be born of a good parent, to have good family, and to be balanced both uh, physically, intellectually, and spiritually. We admire you, and congratulations. <laughs> I'm just going to leave you with two challenges. One, the Glaucoma Society of Nigeria, through the support of the faculty, should have a center for data collection. It is very important. The future is artificial intelligence. Where the money is for the future is in data. If you don't do that, when we are now applying artificial intelligence into eye diseases, we'll be applying those one of Caucasians and Asians. But if you have a good African data, we will have a role to play in ensuring that the artificial intelligence is used based on African data and our interest will be taken care of. The second challenge, um, what touched my heart when the mentor, our, our mentor, Professor Maja Kuding was speaking, is where do we go from here? I pray that this faculty, while she's still alive, will become a college of ophthalmology. I think we have enough resources and promise. I know it's mostly financial. What are we going to lose? But you have enough people to support that vision. And Ma, I want you to drive that vision. And God will give you the strength. And you have the younger people you've been mentoring. They will be there to support you. And I will be there to support you. You did mention about Dr. Nogoya. Sometimes we don't know those who we influence their lives. Joseph and Professor Abiyosi and Mark Moli influenced my own life to go into ophthalmology. I'm one of your project guys soon, but I, <laughs> but I learned a lot from your character to be focused, determined, and go for what you want, irrespective of what's going around you. And I thank you for putting that seed in my mind to germinate. Thank you very much. And to my colleague, Dr. Ajibode, thank you for your kind words. I didn't do it alone. We all did it together. The ophthalmology is family. And there's a pharmacy here, Pharmacy Asuni, who's also on the board of OUTH. She's been a great supporter of ophthalmology.
finally, I thank you all, and I congratulate you, Dr. Nokoya. This is just the beginning. The international world is open to you to enter. I've been trying to push her, but she loved this college so much that she didn't want to take more. Now, the world is yours to conquer, and the Lord will help you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We are coming gradually to the end of the program. Thank you so much for your patience so far. But this is an aspect that is very important to the college, and that's the fundraising and the faculty endowment fund. This will be taken by the faculty secretary, Do Professor Uli okay, Dr. Haran Ajibode. That's the faculty chairman. Thank you. Well, we've been talking and talking and talking. Uh, we now reach a stage where we will have to do something else rather than talk. Let us support what we've been talking about. Annually, we do this, and I must encourage us that for us to do all our programs, it is the support that we get mostly on faculty lecture days. And that's why we keep eulogizing our foremothers and forefathers for establishing a forum like this. And the trick there was that we go to where the lecturer is working. Because that is where he or she will have most of the influence. There was a period in the history of the college when an attempt was made for faculty lectures to go to where college is doing this conference. You can imagine if Professor Nokaya is doing this lecture at Kaduna. Just as, as an example, she may not be able to attract as much of her friends and family and everybody that she knows to Kaduna. We will just listen to lecture and we disperse. And most likely, it is only those of us who are fellows that will listen to our lecture. The lectures we can get without any faculty lecture. So that's why we are here. Uh, to make it very simple, I must say that a little have started uh, coming in. But what we are going to do is that today's documents, the folders, already contain a card, a small card for you to give us promissory notes. Please and please and please, we don't want empty promises. We don't want political promise notes, please. Uh, but to encourage us, I would like to let you know that some people have started the support. I may not mention how, they, how much they have supported us with, the chairman of today has kicked the support rolling. And I want us to appreciate engineer Olumide Onokoya, the mortgagee of Onokoya family. <laughs> if you refuse other titles, you cannot refuse Olori Ebi. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir, and God bless your pocket. We have been supported by Wema Bank. Please join me to thank, he says his mister, Mr. Tunde Mabangoku, the executive director of Weber Bank for being here with us. Thank you very much. There is an anonymous 250,000 Naira. It has made our job very easy. That one is anonymous, so I can announce the amount. There's a donation from the lecturers 
working place of 250,000 Naira, Guinness Eye Center. There are so many fellows who have started donating. It will take our time to start listing them. However, uh, like I said, ushers, please, can you go around with trays and collect? Because collect the promissory notes Ushers so that we can move fast. Ushers, please go around with your trays. And we have the plaid clouds with us. Please, we can fill the plaid clouds. We are also collecting cash. Okay. The ushers are moving around with their trays. Okay. We have... This one is not a problem. This note it has been paid. Women in ophthalmology in Nigeria. Women in ophthalmology. They have supporters... Supported the faculty with 300,000 naira. Uh, the chairman of that group is Professor Patricia Awade. She's based in Jos. You will wonder why women in ophthalmology is separate. They drive eye care. In Nigeria, they are the dominant gender in ophthalmology. Without them, we probably would not be this large in number. I want to announce some of these companies that we are expecting their support. If they have given support, I've seen some of the adverts on the booklet. On the booklet for this lecture. Fitsin. Fitsin Pharmaceutical Company. Fitsin Healthcare PLC. Thank you, but we want more. Okay. To make our job easier, I want to announce an account. Uh, they should display it, but I will also mention it. I will mention it for those who don't want to wait for display. The account name is Ophthalmic Unit. And the number is at Union Bank, 000 74 24154. That is the account number for donations. 000 74 Union Bank. You can be very sure that uh, we, will, we will acknowledge your donations. And as you can see, we will use it judiciously. The faculty not only has elected officers, we have an audit committee of the internal audit. And if there is any doubt, we sometimes ask the college to audit us. But since the formation of our own faculty, the college has not had any reason to audit our account because we are judicious and we are careful with what you gave us. I have here Professor Mrs. Yabo Mabamoku, 20,000 Naira. Tolu Mabamoku, 25,000 Naira. Yes, yes, yes. We want uh, like a hundred donors before we leave here. Dr. Tony Smith, 40,000 Naira. Ha! 
<laughs> Now wow This one is a boom It's a bam It's a big 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 This one is a banga five times From Kunle Azan I Foundation Academy The amount is not supposed to be announced But I can tell you The amount here encourages you to give us thousands of dollars. Mr. and Mrs. O.A. Fajobi, 200,000 naira. Can we please know you? If you are here, God bless you. Well, this is a fellow of the faculty and a member of the faculty board Dr. Sarimi 30,000 naira Yes the next list of seniors in our faculty Dr. Festus Oduayo Shoba 200,000 naira Dr. T.O. Oyeleye, 50,000 naira. Wow, wow, wow. This donor is all the way from Port Harcourt to attend this lecture. Dr. Goswil Nathaniel, 50,000 naira. My good friend and one of the CMDs of of uh, Air Foundation Hospital Group, Dr. Fatai Oluya, the 50,000 naira. Fala Shade Odunlami, 25,000 naira. Let's keep it rolling. More donations, please. Dr. Amechi Oko, 100,000 naira. Please, let us appreciate Dr. Oko. Please, let's celebrate and appreciate Dr. Oko for his generous donation. Dr. Modupe Elebute has given us a generous donation not to be announced. Mrs. Toby Odunaya, 50,000 naira. Can you please put your hands together for Mrs. Toby Odunaya? This is another bill. Prince Ajibola, 500,000 naira. Mr. and Mrs. Fagba Miller, 10,000 naira. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any other donors so that we can round it up? Donation continues. It's on the screen. The account is displayed on the screen, please. The account number is 000-74- Two four one five four. Can I take it again? Union Bank zero 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 seven four two four one five four. Thank you, sir.
Mr. and Mrs. Owolabi, 100,000 Naira. Can you please put your hands together for Mr. and Mrs. Owolabi, 100,000 Naira. Mr. Giwa Admin, your attention is needed. I guess donation will continue from now. You can continue to transfer. You can continue to get in touch with the LOC. I want to use this opportunity to bless and uh, to thank you all. Uh, no, 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 let, let me not uh, have a slip of tongue. Because there are so many, there is, there is in fact a church community here. So let me now say what I'm not able to say. I want to thank all of you, whether you have donated or you are planning to donate for supporting our faculty. And we assure you that everything will be done to make the faculty better before you meet us in Abuja next year. You are all invited to Abuja next year for another faculty lecture. Thank you, everybody. Um, after a truly impactful morning stroke afternoon, it's time for us to draw the curtains on the events of the day. But first, I'd like to recognize the presence of um, the CEO, MD of Rave TV, Miss Agatha Amata. You're welcome, Ma. She joined us during the program. Next, I'd like to, I'd like to invite the chairman, LOC, Dr. Adetunja Adinekon, to give us the closing remarks and vote of thanks. Chairman, LOC. Chairman, LOC. Dr. Adenekon. Chairman LOC for your for the closing remarks and vote of thanks. Okay. So I should take a phone. Okay. Can we please take our seats now while we round things up? Thank you very much. Distinguished fellows of our college, the program is still on. Distinguished fellows, the program is still on. In the next five minutes, you'll be able to do all this. Thank you very much, the Master of Ceremony, our Hebu, Dr. Oliemi Taiwo, and Dr. Olayinka Wola. On behalf of the local organizing committee, I would like to appreciate everyone who has given moral, financial, and mental support to the success of this 24th annual faculty lecture. We appreciate those who grace us with their presence physically and also virtually. But I would like to mention a few who has done more than just that support that we all dreamed of when planning this program. I would like to thank the college and as well as our faculty of ophthalmology, ably led by Professor Aaron Ajibode for trusting in today's lecturer to be able to deliver this 24th annual faculty lecture. Likewise, on behalf of the LOC, I would like to thank Wema Bank for their commitment and support to the success of this program. 
all pharmaceutical companies present and those who donated generously, Aventra Provision, Pfizer Viatris, Alpha Pharmacy, Treatment Direct Limited, and Essilor. We thank you for your donations. The Glaucoma Society of Nigeria, we also want to appreciate you for gracing us with your presence. And indeed, today is all about you. I would like to thank all the CEOs here present, current and past CEOs of Lagoon, group of hospitals, I Foundation Hospitals Group, staff of College of Medicine University of Lagos and Lagos University Chitin Hospital. And permit me to recognize my chairman of the Medical and Dental Association of Nigeria, Lut Chapter, my own friend, childhood friend precisely, and my chairman, Dr. Kenide Okwade. I also want to appreciate all church members who are here present, Mrs. Odunaya and friends, all resident doctors here, and the media. Rave TV, NTA, TVC, Punch Newspaper, News Agency of Nigeria. We appreciate you. I would like to appreciate, on behalf of the LOC as well, the lecturer for today, who thought it fit to bring this group of people together to form the LOC and for believing in us to be able to do uh, this honor. Finally, I want to appreciate all members of the LOC. All my members of the LOC, I love you all. Thank you so much for all the support. I'm grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank I think you. at this juncture, we will all go back to our seats. So. Please, photographer, it's time to take national. We need to go back to our seats. Please, photographers, can you stop? Photographers, can you stop? All right, please, because we still have national anthem recession. Please, after this, go back to your seat. Please, fellows, please back to your seat. Please, you are delaying me. Please take the picture. All right, please, no more photos. Sir. Please, man, go back to your seat. We have recession. Please, back all fellows in gowns back to your seat. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Please, uh, please, let's all have our seats. Even if you are standing, it's fine. Me, uh, media, please, national anthem. National anthem. Thank you very much. May we be seated, please. Please let us sit down. 
Recession, please. Let us sit down. Distinguished guests, let's have our seats. Please let us. Can we all sit down, please? Hold on, please. Hold on. Hold on. Media, hold on. Please, I would like to call all LOC members to please go outside and prepare for the lunch. LOC members who are not on, in gowns, please go outside and prepare for the lunch. Please, our faculty lecturer, ma'am, it's time recession. for recession. It's time for recession, please. So. Please, the recession will be in reverse order. The college officers first, the faculty officers to follow, senior fellows like that, in reverse order, the way we came in. Please, let's get set, all our fellows in gowns. Please, the faculty lecturer, we would like you to be by your seat. We appreciate the sum of 100,000 Naira only from Nona Natal International Ventures. Yes, ma'am. You. We need you on your seat. It's time for the session. All right, please. Media, recession. College officers, followed by faculty officers. Senior fellows, after the faculty officers. Our lecturer today is with the college and faculty officers. Then followed by senior fellows to the youngest of the fellow. get seated and um, be ready for lunch so we can arrange lunch in an orderly fashion. Thank you. Please let's get seated. The lunch is, lunch going to is be about to orderly be. fashion. Served. The first four tables where we have all our peace we go first. Table one to four. We'll be going for lunch first. Mm -hmm. 